Okay, so I'm going to do a video here on the area of composite figures. And the area of composite figures, well first of all we need to know what a composite figure is. So a composite figure, and we're just going to look at simple two-dimensional, we're not going to do three-dimensional, we're not going to do surface area. What composite w means is two or more. So it's composed of more than one. And what we're looking at here for our purposes is two or more uh, polygons or uh, figures. And when I say or figures, it's because they don't have to be polygons. You can have circles, semicircles, and those are not polygons. So polygons or fi other figures. And I probably should put other up there to kind of explain that a little bit better. So let's look at a couple of examples of composite figures. Well, a composite figure, when you're doing the area of polygons, you know your general area formulas, okay? And I'll write those as we go. But we have rectangle, square, triangle, parallelogram, those you all have formulas for. Now, what is a composite figure? Well, if I give you something that looks like this, kind of looks like a home plate for softball, me being a softball coach, of course. Of course, this would be a warped home plate. However, this is a composite figure. There is no formula for the area of a pentagon that looks like this. It's not a regular pentagon. It's just a pentagon. There is no pentagon formula because all pentagons are different. And so what you have to do with these composite shapes is you actually have to create shapes that you know within that shape and see what combination you have. So if I come into this polygon right here and I add a line right there, now I can find the area because I've got a triangle here and I've got a rectangle here. And I'm going to assume it's a rectangle just because I want to assume it's a rectangle. But now all I have to do to find the area of this figure is to find the area of the triangle and then find the area of the rectangle and combine them. One of the most common types of composite figures that you will see is a track around a football field. So around the football field, you, you've got your straightaways and then you've got your curves. Okay, and then you've got your curves. And the curves, I believe, are semicircles. I don't know if they're exact, but for our purposes, we're gonna assume that they are. So when you look at this figure, again, there's no formula for the area of something that's shaped like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a line here and a line here. Now what do I have? I've got a rectangle and then I have two semicircles. And in this case, two semicircles comes together to make one circle. So here's, this is just a couple of examples of what you might see for a composite figure. I'm going to do one more and then I'm actually going to start showing you how to find the area of these guys. Let's say I have a composite figure that looks like this. and I want you to find the area of that. Again, there's no area formula for a giant magnet looking thing. So we have to divide this up into shapes that we do know. So shapes that we do know, I can divide it this way and this way if I want to, which creates rectangle, rectangle, and rectangle. If I want to, I could have done it a little bit differently. I know it's gonna be kind of busy drawn on here. I could have done it this way and this way, and I would still have rectangle, rectangle, rectangle. I could have done it this way and this way, and I still have rectangle, rectangle, rectangle. I could have done rectangle, 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 and done five rectangles if I wanted to. I don't need to. I could have done the line all the way across here and done one rectangle down here, and then two rectangles here. So you see there's a, a variety of different ways you can divide these up. So let's look at some area formulas with these composite figures and see how we can find an area of a composite figure. Okay. So our first example that I'm going to do for the composite figures is I'm going to give you, let's start off with the one that we did kind of up, up there, up at the beginning, <laughs> up there, that's really specific. And let's do the house. Okay, so let's do the house. Now the house, we're going to divide this up into a triangle and a rectangle. And I'm going to give you dimensions here. So let's say, and I'm going to mark it because if we want to be proper, we'll mark it. And then I'll give you this. Let's say this is 10 centimeters. And let's say this is 5 centimeters. 
and we'll say this right here is 4 centimeters. So how would I find the area of that figure? Well, what is it a combination of? I have a triangle, and what's the formula for the area of a triangle? Base times height divided by 2, and then I also have a rectangle. And I'm looking for some colors here so I can use different colors. Then I've also got the area of a rectangle. And the formula for the area of a rectangle is base times height. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find two different areas here. The first area, let's do the triangle. Thank you, baby. Thank you, sweetie. The area of the, of the triangle is base times height divided by 2. So what's the base of this triangle here? Well, since that's a rectangle, if this is 10, this has also got to be 10. And for a uh, triangle, we do base times height divided by 2. So I'm going to come out here. My base is 10. My height is 4. And that's all going to be divided by 2. Okay, I'm running out of area here. So 10 times 4 is 40. And 40 divided by 2 is 20. So the area, and that's going to be centimeters squared, by the way. The area of this right here is 20 centimeters squared. So now let's find the area of the rectangle. The rectangle area is base times height. This is your base. Sorry, my kids are yelling. And 5 is your height. So the area of the rectangle is 50 centimeters squared. So if I want to find the total area for the whole figure, all I'm going to do, all I'm going to do is I'm going to combine. So, and again, let me shade this in so you can see. Okay, so the area of my rectangle is 20 centimeters squared, and the area, sorry, my triangle, and the area of my rectangle is 50 centimeters squared. So the total area for this whole composite figure is 70 centimeters squared. And that's how you do a composite area for a composite shape. Now I'm going to give you an example using circles, and I know you can kind of see the back of the paper here. In fact, I'll just go to a new page. So let's do a composite figure like the one I showed you with the track. So let's do a second figure here, and I'm going to give you an example kind of what we saw earlier. And I'm going to make this a composite figure, and I want to know what the area is. Now I'm going to give you some uh, dimensions, and let's say that this is a um, hundred meters and then I'm going to tell you that this right here is oh, let's say 30 meters and I want to know what's the area of this whole figure what is the entire composite area well the first thing I have to do is I have to divide this into the necessary shapes so Let's divide it into what we do know. We can't find the area of this, but we do know how to find the area of circles and semicircles, and we know how to find the area of rectangles. So you've got a rectangle here, and you've got two semicircles. Rectangle's the easiest. Let's do that guy first. The area of a rectangle is base times height. So the base of my rectangle is 100 meters. The height of my rectangle is 30 meters. So the area of my rectangle is going to be 3,000 square meters. And remember with area, you want to make sure you have your units on there. Okay? So that covers this. So now we're left with the two semicircles. And I'm going to show you how to do it with one semicircle and then double that, but when you're in a situation like this, technically you have one full circle, you can just do the area of one circle. All right, so pay attention to this 30 meters. When you look at the area of a circle, the area of a circle is pi times radius squared. So we have to find out what the radius is. This 30 meters is the distance all the way across. So 30 meters is actually the diameter. So how do I find the radius when I know the diameter? And you can imagine, when you're looking at this, you can imagine that this circle extends here. That's where you can see that this is the diameter. So the radius is 15 meters. Okay? 
So since the radius is 15, I can find the area of what would be a whole circle there. But do I have a whole circle? No, I don't. I've only got half. So I'm going to do pi times my radius, which is 15 squared. And that's going to give me 225 times pi. And if you multiply that out, I don't have my calculator in front of me, but I will multiply that out a little bit. So one full circle would be 225 pi. What if I only had the semicircle? Remember I told you we can use the circle here because there is a full circle because when I slide these two guys together I have a full circle. What if I had a picture that looks just like this and I did not have this other semicircle? What would I do with the area I just computed? I would divide it by two because I only have a semicircle. But since there's two of them, I can do the area of a full circle. So that full circle covers both pieces. So now I'm going to do my total area for this, for this particular object. And my total area is going to be 3,000 meters squared plus 225 pi meters squared. Now I'm going to go ahead and enter this in the calculator. Just Sometimes you like to leave things in terms of pi. So I'm going to actually, hi sweetheart. Um, Shh, don't do that, please. Don't do that. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply this out, and I'm going to be, I've got a very, very archaic calculator. Uh, that's 225, by the way, not 222, 225. So I'm going to use my handy dandy iPhone calculator and uh, do 3.14. And so this is approximately, you're going to have 3,000 meters squared plus 706.5 meters squared. And when you add those together, you'll get the total composite area for this figure. So you're going to have 3,706.5 meters squared. And that is your final answer. So that is how you do the area of composite figures. You look at the figures that you have. If I did a third example, which I may do a third example here, or at least start you on one, Sometimes, what if you have a figure that looks like this? Okay. Well, if I could actually draw, imagine for a minute that I can, that looks like a trapezoid, right? And we know the formula for the trapezoid, okay? The area formula for a trapezoid is base 1 plus base 2 times height divided by 2, right? Where does that formula come from? Because this is the base, this is the base, and then this is going to be, I'll make a little deal here. We'll pretend like this is the height. We'll pretend like these are right angles. We'll just use a nice, easy right trapezoid. Why do we use this formula for a trapezoid? It's actually based on kind of a composite. What can I actually do here and divide this into? Okay, what can I actually divide this into? Well, there's two ways I can divide this up. What if I divided it up this way? What do I now have? This is a parallelogram. Oh, thank you, sweetheart. Come here. My son just brought me flowers. My son just brought me flowers. <laughs> oh, I love my children. So that's the formula for the area of a parallelogram. Well, what's the formula for the area of a parallelogram? The area of a parallelogram is base times height, right? And in this case, what's the base for the parallelogram? Base 2, right? Because this is going to be the same as this. And then what's the height? It's this, right? So that's going to take care of that portion. Let's do the other portion. I've got a triangle now, right? This is my other piece of the trapezoid. I'm showing you where the formula for the area of a trapezoid comes from right by now. So What's this little piece right here? Well, that little piece right there is going to be the big base, which is this one, minus the small base, right? Because let's say that was 15 and that was 6. 15 minus 6 would tell you what that piece is. What's the formula for the area of a triangle? Base times height divided by 2, right? Okay. What's the base of my triangle here? Base 1 
minus base 2, right? And what's my height? Here. H, right? And then what do you do with a triangle? You divide by 2. Okay, so now to get the area of a trapezoid, I'm adding this guy and this guy together. So the base 2 times the height plus base 1 minus base 2 times height over 2. And you don't need to know this for the test. I'm just showing you how, how, we, how this came about, how to derive the formula. So let's, let's combine this. Well, let's get a common denominator first. Let's multiply this by 2 over 2 so that I can put that on top. So base 2 height over 2. I have to remember you multiply the top and the bottom by the same. Plus, and now let's distribute and get rid of some of this. We have base 1 times height minus base 2 times height all over 2. All I did again was I put this over 2 so I could do a common denominator, LCD. Now let's combine what we combine. B2H. I have 2B2H here, and I'll do this in different colors. I have 2B2Hs and I have 1 minus B2H. What's 2B2H minus B2H? Well that's 1 base 2 times height, right? 2 minus 1, I've got 1 here, 2 here. What else is left on top? That plus is there still, plus base 1 times height, right? And what's the denominator? What are they all divided by? 2, right? Now, what can I factor out of this particular equation? Well, I can factor out the H, and that leaves me with B1 plus B2 over 2, and there is your area formula for a trapezoid. So that's where it comes from. It comes from using the composites. Again, this might be a bonus question, but this is not going to be something on the test, but that's how you derive the formula for a trapezoid. So those are how you do composites.